I just now looked up when the last time we made a minimalism video was and it was nine months ago. So it's about time we share another one. I've kind of been reflecting lately about why I started minimalism and what it means to me. And so in today's video, I really wanna share certain things that I've learned along the way and things that I wish I had known before I got started. So let's dive in. Getting rid of things can be a really complex mix of feelings and emotions, and it can have to do with fears of letting go of the past, or maybe you're worried about being wasteful. For some people, it might mean kind of facing really uncomfortable mental and emotional clutter. But there's one thing that I've learned and something I wish I knew before I got started. It's a lot easier to let go of things when you have a strong reason to do it. See, I adopted minimalism after having backpacked for six months and having realized that I was kind of at my happiest when I had only a small backpack full of things. The local I would meet, they also looked like they had so few things, but they were also so fulfilled and joyful with their lives. And having seen that, I realized that the reason I wanted to try minimalism was because I didn't want to rely on possessions to make me happy, but instead on experiences and time spent with people. I kind of wish that somebody had told me that willpower alone wouldn't be enough to create or maintain a minimalist lifestyle, but that I would need a strong reason, a strong why power, and then it would all come together a lot more easily. I wish that somebody had told me that what works for somebody else might not necessarily work for me. In the beginning, I was really eager to learn about minimalism. So I was watching documentaries, reading books, watching YouTube videos, and because I was so motivated, I kind of wanted to do everything that everyone was saying. But you see, no minimalist gurus or documentary teams are gonna show up at your house to see if you're doing everything correctly or if you're doing it all at once. We're not impressing anybody with our decision to try out minimalism. It's purely a decision we make for ourselves. And the wonderful thing about minimalism is there is no right or wrong way to do it. Some people prefer to downsize their possessions in just one or two days. Other people might need a couple of weeks or months to do it. And the beautiful thing is that there are no deadlines. And another thing that I've definitely learned is that you don't need your partner or your family members to adopt a minimalist lifestyle for you to do it. It's just between you and your own things and how those things make you feel. When I first tried to minimize and declutter, I was using the same old techniques I had been using for years. And I kind of wish somebody had told me, if those techniques weren't working for you before, why do you suddenly think they're gonna start working for you now? And luckily I had been hearing everywhere and from everybody about a book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. By now you guys know that I love listening to audiobooks and I've just incorporated it into my daily routine. So I added that book to my list and let me tell you the glowing reviews on the book do not disappoint. It's more than just a guidebook of practical advice on how to clean and get rid of things. It's also about learning more about ourselves through our attachment to things. One strategy that Marie shares that I use all the time when I'm decluttering is to physically hold an item in your hands and ask yourself, does this item spark joy? Does it make me feel good about myself and my life? If the answer is no, you actually don't want to just throw it away. Marie recommends thanking the item for having once served you before you discard it. If it does spark joy, I don't just put it back anywhere. I find it a home, a place where it can happily live live. She speaks about objects as if they're alive and that's kind of just shifted my perception about the things that I own and the things that I'm getting rid of and she just shares a lot of really golden tips that I definitely recommend for anybody who's new to the minimalist lifestyle or who's just looking for a new way to approach it. As usual Audible has been generous enough to partner with us on this video so we can offer you this book or any other book that you'd like in addition to a 30-day free membership by visiting audible.com forward slash makeup limes or you can click that link in the description box below. I feel like everybody who's adopted minimalism at one point or another has felt a little bit guilty for having too much stuff, maybe especially in the realm of our work or our hobbies. Like I know that I was personally facing that kind of internal struggle when I was unpacking all of the food photography props at the new studio, because I was thinking to myself, you know, no minimalist would have this many plates and bowls and cups and cutlery. It just seems excessive. But you see, here's the thing. I use all of those props. I use them for the work I do. I want to create recipe videos and blog posts that are appealing and each a little bit different. And having a selection to choose from that truly inspires my creativity and it sparks happiness in the work that I do. So I wish someone had told me that minimalism doesn't have to be an all or nothing approach. That in some areas I would live with less and in other areas I would just consciously live with a little bit more. And I say consciously because even in those areas where I have a little bit more, I try to follow a minimalist mindset even still. Purchasing reused plates and cups if I can, or donating old ones that I no longer enjoy or need or use. Remember that minimalism can be used as a guideline rather than a strict set of rules. 
I wish somebody had told me that being a minimalist does not mean having to be frugal. And while it's true that I try to purchase fewer things now than I did before, and that I'm trying to purchase things from secondhand stores whenever I can, the truth of the matter is that I'm actually noticing I spend a lot more on each particular item that I purchase now than I did before. Like looking back to what I was doing before, I would go and I would buy five or $10 sweaters because they were a good deal. But you know how it goes. You wash those sweaters once or twice and they start to fade. And after a month or two, you end up tossing them. So now I don't mind spending a bit more on higher quality clothes or accessory items or electronic equipment because in my mind if it lasts longer it's paying itself off in the long term. It creates less waste and it brings fewer new things into the home. I wish that somebody had told me that it's totally okay to treat myself to higher quality products while still fully recognizing that the best things in life are the ones that are free. Things like love and relationships, health and personal growth. An important aspect of minimalism that I've come to really appreciate is that it kind of forces us to get brutally honest with ourselves. Like sometimes we hang on to certain things because we think it's gonna motivate us to take action. Like a skinny pair of jeans might motivate us to exercise or that canvas and paint collecting dust might motivate us to get creative. But at what point do those things kind of become tokens of guilt or inadequacy? And how long do we have to keep them for before we realize that it might be negatively impacting our lives? Like are we keeping those things because it's nourishing our soul in some way and does it spark joy or do we genuinely plan to use it? Because if that's the case, then we'll absolutely keep it. But if it's an item that's just filled with empty promises, then it might be time to let that thing go. I feel like through everything I've learned and experienced, minimalism has meant living a simpler life and placing value on ourselves and other people and experiences more than material things. And I think one of the things I love about it most is the mindset. But what about you? What do you wish that you had known before you started down this journey? Or were any of the tips that we shared today, did you find those helpful? Let me know by sharing in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, it always means a lot if you give it a thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching. Pick Up Limes signing off. We'll see you in the next video.